Now I wish to invite Professor Rock Civiak uh, for his presentation. Uh, as you have seen, uh, Professor Civiak is not currently in Dubrovnik, he's in uh, Sibenik, so that is a wonderful uh, city in front of Italy, very close to Split, another wonderful city of uh, Croatia. Croatia, please, Rock. Thank you, Nicola, very much for inviting me. And thanks uh, to Analita who invited me and organized the webinar. So at the early beginning of this uh, presentation, I would like to recall some of our memories uh, of the faculty of this uh, webinar, such as our meeting where Nicola, Liliana and me were members of the faculty at the ESMIT, European Society for Clinical Microbiology and Infectious Diseases uh, postgraduate course in 2014. Also, some of the memories from the uh, city of Sibenik, where my hometown, where I am now at the moment, uh, and the beautiful cathedral of St. James, uh, that is the UNESCO World Heritage. Uh, also, one of the meetings where uh, Nicola attended uh, in Sibenik a few years ago, where we were at the top of the old town with a beautiful view on a beautiful cathedral. This is also one of the parts of the uh, interior of uh, Shibani Cathedral uh, that we visited in 2014. Uh, the baptistery of the inner part of cathedral, uh, actually the place where I was baptized. And uh, last but not least, uh, our memories with uh, Analita in Dubrovnik in 2016, when we met for the first time during the Global uh, Bioethics Initiative Summer School that was uh, attended by uh, my wife, Marta and me. Now let's move to the topic uh, that is uh, COVID-20, actually a syntagma that was, uh, uh, that was, uh, um, that was uh, invented a few weeks ago, uh, meaning the creation experience uh, during the COVID-19 pandemic and why COVID and why 20, we will explain, I will explain you during my uh, presentation. Uh, Liliana, uh, my friend and colleague from the Bromnik uh, County Hospital, made an uh, excellent introduction to my presentation, uh, explaining uh, uh, from history of the Middle Ages uh, how epidemics prevailing in Europe at that time and described the quarantine as a highly effective method for preventing epidemics, which even today, after nearly 700 years, still has important implications. Now we moved from history to reality of the present day, marked this year by a newly uh, discovered uh, coronavirus. But uh, coronaviruses are known for uh, 60 years as uh, imported human and animal pathogens that cause up to one third of community acquired upper respiratory tract infections, such as common cold, pharyngitis, otitis media, but also play a role in severe respiratory infections in both children and adults, such as influenza like illness, acute exacerbation of COPD, bronchiolitis and the community-acquired pneumonia. Uh, human uh, coronaviruses can cause diarrhea in infants and children, and uh, they also, uh, it's seen that they also can cause uh, central nervous system diseases, such as encephalitis in severely immunocompromised infants, but uh, their role in the disinfections uh, has not been proven yet. A uh, few uh, months ago, uh, at early uh, February 2020, my colleagues and uh, I published an uh, article as an introduction to uh, newly coming uh, infectious disease uh, COVID-19 in a distinguished Croatian medical journal that was entitled The Third Coronavirus Epidemic in the Third Millennium, What's Next? Actually, in the article, we discussed the emergence of a novel coronavirus, SARS coronavirus 2, that has reopened the issue of the role and importance of coronaviruses in humans, definitively confirming that these uh, relatively harmless family of viruses 
includes major pathogens of epidemic potential. Also, the COVID-19 epidemic has clearly demonstrated that uh, the power of infectious diseases, which have been responsible for many devastating epidemics throughout history. The first such uh, disease originated in Guangdong, in southern province of China in November 2002, and was named Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome, SARS, and the cause was shown to be a novel coronavirus, SARS coronavirus, believed to have been an animal virus that had recently crossed uh, the species barrier to infect humans. And bats were the most likely reservoir. Approximately 25% of the patients uh, developed organ failure, most often acute respiratory distress syndrome, and uh, required admission to an ICU. Approximately 20% of uh, all the patients uh, were healthcare workers actually, and therefore in addition to persons uh, exposed to potential animal resources and infected family members, healthcare workers were among the most heavily exposed and potentially vulnerable uh, population. In less than a year, only in a few months, uh, exported cases of SARS had been reported in more than 20 countries uh, throughout the world, including Europe, but not Croatia, with over 8,000 cases and 10% uh, 10 of, 10 of them died. In the summer of uh, 2012, another epidemic caused by a novel coronavirus presenting with respiratory and renal failure broke out in the Middle East. The disease was called the Middle East Respiratory Syndrome, while the novel coronavirus causing it was called Middle East Respiratory Syndrome Coronavirus, MERS coronavirus. It is closely related to coronavirus isolated from dromedary camels and bats, which are considered the primary reservoirs of the disease. Since 2012, over 2,500 cases uh, of MERS, including more than 800 associated deaths, were reported globally in 27 countries. The overall case fatality ratio is around 35%. However, MERS, unlike its uh, predecessor, SARS coronavirus, did not disappear, but still uh, circulates among animals and human populations, occasionally causing outbreaks. In case of MERS, also healthcare workers uh, uh, were accounting for about 20% of all uh, cases, and more than half of all laboratory confirmed secondary cases were acquired through human to human transmission in healthcare settings, likely due at least in part to shortcomings in infection prevention and control. In uh, mid December of 2019, Two decades after the SARS epidemic and less than a decade after the first outbreak of MERS, a pneumonia outbreak erupted once again in China, the city of Wuhan, which spread during the next two months throughout the country, with over 100,000 cases and more than 2,500 fatal outcomes by the end of February. At that time, exported cases were reported in 30 countries throughout the world, with over 2,000 registered coronavirus patients, of whom more than 200 were in Europe. Rock, uh, I have a question for you. Did you expect such uh, a scenario in Croatia at the beginning uh, of uh, February? Well, our uh, hospital administration has been monitoring everything uh, uh, what's happening in the world by uh, news from the WHO, CDC, ECDC, as well the ESMIT website. The ESMIT Emerging Infections Task Force, established by the Executive Committee and it's uh, co-chaired by you, Nicola, and uh, Eskil Peterson from Denmark, uh, uh, was warning constantly about the possibility of the emergence of uh, such an infectious disease that poses a substantial uh, epidemic risk of spreading globally and causing a pandemic. At that time, however, only few thought that Croatia would be affected by the epidemic and we were just thinking of uh, such a possibility as a theoretical possibility, but not as a reality. 
but unfortunately on February 25, uh, the first case of COVID-19 was confirmed in Zagreb, Croatia, and was linked to an outbreak in the Lombardy and Veneto regions of northern Italy. International travelers have been shown to be important sources of infectious diseases and the possible source of epidemics. After the epidemic in China was mitigated, Italy actually became one of the most COVID-19 afflicted countries worldwide. Due to its political, geographical and cultural similarities with Southeast European countries, Italy is one of the main economic partners of these countries. So our data show that infection in the index cases, sorry, in all 11 Southeast European countries was travel related, while uh, Italy was source country for eight out of 11 Southeast European countries. Uh, this is, uh... This is a, a, a wonderful history because uh, during the, the centuries, uh, uh, six uh, centuries ago, syphilis was called uh, in Italy the German plague, in France uh, the Italian plague, and in Germany the French plague. So <laughs> the, the, the origin of diseases uh, is always uh, mysterious. But uh, Rock, when was the peak of the epidemic and how did you manage it? Well, at the time when the COVID-19 pandemic was approaching its peak, apart from the problems with the treatment of disease and the care for critical ill patients, there were uh, other equally important issues such as organization of outbreak response, provision of health care, lack of uh, hospital personnel, disruption of uh, personal protective equipment supply chains and healthcare workers protection. Even more uh, important uh, are the humanity and heroism of healthcare workers who place their own lives uh, at risk. The government of Croatia uh, has established the national uh, civil defense headquarters in order to raise uh, the level of preparedness of all the competent authorities protect health of Croatian citizens and coordinate all the services in the battle against COVID in Croatia. The Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of the Interior was chosen to lead the headquarters, whose members are the Director of the Croatian Institute of Public Health, the Director of Croatian Institute of Emergency Medicine, and the Director of Dr. Fran Mihaljevic University Hospital for Infectious Diseases, where I work. After the daily meetings, the headquarters issue press releases every day. Rock, we don't see the, the screen, your slides. Can you? Sorry, sorry. We don't see the slides. Sorry. If you share the, the slides. Okay, that's okay. So maybe it is a good time to see the uh, following movie, which is a short version of a documentary filmed at my hospital about the organization of our fight against COVID and our response to the COVID-19 epidemic at the beginning, but also after the earthquake that occurred on March 22, just at the time of the peak of the COVID-19 epidemic in Croatia. Can you see the movie? Da bi mi zaštitili i e, osoblje i bolesnike jedne od drugih, kad pacijent dođe na prijem, mi ne znamo ko će od njih ispast na kraju pozitivan, ko ne, jer će neki od njih sigurno i većina od njih su negativni, a ovi koji dođu pozitivni mogu ugroziti osobe koje čekaju zajedno s njima u istom prostoru. Zato smo iz naše primarne prijemne ambulante koju ćemo vidjeti, morali napraviti jedno novo trijažno mjesto gdje će se raditi trijaža na početku ulaza dakle, bolesnika u bolnicu, gdje se to smo nazvali prijamno trijažna punkt ili prijamno trijažnu djelatnost, gdje svi bolesnici kad uđu na našu portu, javljaju se prvo na ovaj ovdje šalter, to je mjesto gdje se događa prvi kontakt sa bolesnika, sa osobljem naše bolnice,
u jednom trenutku sam razmišljao dajem dušu Bogu, a Bog je neće. Tako mi je bilo teško. To je sve oblijepljeno zbog toga da ne bi slučajno aerosoli zašao van, ali tako ne. To je jedina svrha i po onom što što smo do sad vidjeli, to funkcionira, dakle, hvala dragom Bogu, niko se još od djelatnika nije razbolio. Tako da to je ovako malo primitivno izgledao, funkcionira. Dakle, padao je i snijeg. Dakle, to su bili vrlo teški trenuci. Kada smo imali te bolesnike, sve iz soba evakuirati na dvorište naše klinike. Dakle, pacijenti su bili promrzli, potreba za kisikom je bila. Dakle, sav rad se obavljao u okolini klinike. Mi nekako stalno imamo onaj nekakav sindrom da mislimo da je svugdje drugdje bolje, da svi su bolje organizirani svi. Da, sustavi imaju više novaca, više tehnologije. Mi smo pokazali da mi s našom organizacijom, sa razumijevanjem infektivnih bolesti, sa disciplinom naših građana, možemo biti vrhovski. Samo to sad trebamo zadršati. Ono što u sve novome posebno bih istaknula i što me veseli, to je zajedništvo. To je ono što sam doživjela naravno i prije, ali znate, ono, po muci se i u muci se poznaju junaci, tako i prijateljstvo, suradnja, sloga jedna i zajedništvo, koje zapravo vlada među nama i takovim jednim predanim radom i zajedništvom od zapravo spremačice, servirke, medicinske sestre, lječnika, dakle svih ljudi koji su uključeni u skrb naših bolesnika, to je zapravo jedan glavni uvjet da naši bolesnici imaju dobru skrb. I to je ono što me u svemu tome taj dio veseli, da je zapravo osoblje još jednom dokazalo da se doista može nositi sa najgorim situacijama. Sorry. Rock, this is a very important experience. Uh, what do you think was the most uh, important success of the Croatian fight against the COVID-19 outbreak? Well, I think that we have had an extraordinary experience with this earthquake in the time of COVID-19, and that's the reason why we invented this uh, acronym uh, COVID-20 as a unique experience uh, and uh, actually what uh, surprised us is that the spread of the epidemic has not accelerated and the country still has one of the lowest COVID-19 rates in Europe. We have learned also that uh, we cannot do without uh, one another. Physicians without nurses, patients without healthcare workers, healthcare workers without non-medical staff, parents without children and children without parents. Also, the public compliance was uh, also important and the social distancing and other preventive measures have successfully prevented the COVID-19 epidemic from spreading in our country. 
So I think that uh, uh, that's the reason why uh, we have uh, 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 keep this low prevalence uh, of COVID-19. And uh, as showed in this slide, uh, while the epidemic was increasing in other counties, the red uh, line shows the number of newly diagnosed cases in Zagreb regions that was affected by earthquake. And uh, instead of uh, increasing number, we have uh, noticed the constant decrease of number of uh, newly discovered COVID cases, even that we experienced this uh, earthquake. Also, uh, here is a list of uh, reported COVID-19 cases uh, listed uh, by uh, total number of cases per 1 million populations, also showing that Croatia has one of the lowest, uh, 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 lowest rate of uh, COVID cases per 1 million population, while all the surrounding countries uh, and other European countries has uh, much higher rates than uh, we have. So that is the short version of our COVID-20 experience uh, and thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Rock. Thank you very much for your wonderful presentation. Uh, now I, I wish to, to give, uh, to explain uh, uh, my experience with the outbreak in Italy. Italy was the first European country to be involved in uh, this uh, pandemic and Rome was the first city in Italy to identify and admit uh, COVID-19 patients. The first two cases in Italy were two Chinese, a wife and a husband coming from Wuhan that was the center of the epidemic and traveling uh, as tourists in Italy. We are on January 29 2020, 2020. They had a fever during their stay in Italy and they were admitted in my hospital, that is a 200 bed hospital only for infectious diseases. In my hospital, we are fully prepared again to admit and isolate such patients because we are the reference for high contagious infections. And during the Ebola, uh, uh, epidemic 2014 2016 we were the, we were the reference center and we admitted uh, patients with ebola and uh, i managed them i also worked in africa in nigeria with ebola patients very soon uh, during the, the stay of the two chinese uh, persons uh, uh, they got uh, very very sick and uh, they were moved to intensive care because uh, of uh, pulmonary failure. And there they were mechanically ventilated. A uh, few days later, another, uh, another person, a young an Italian young man was deployed from Huan in, in China and uh, he was completely asymptomatic, but he was found to be positive for COVID and was also admitted in my hospital. So there were three cases and we thought that uh, the outbreak was over, but it was not over. Uh, the clinical course of these two Chinese uh, patients was very, very long and finally they recovered. Finally, they were sent home uh, after a long stay. The same was for the Italian uh, men. But about one month later, fr uh, from the admittance of the two Chinese persons uh, uh, in uh, my hospital in north of Italy, in around about uh, 500 kilometers uh, far from Rome in uh, Lombardy region, there was uh, a big cluster of COVID-19 uh, cases. The days uh, after was uh, a dramatic increase of uh, COVID-19 uh, cases in Italy and also in my region, that is Lazio region with uh, 6 million inhabitants. We don't know which was the source of the infection in Lombardy. Lombardy is a region with high uh, concentration of uh, 
commercial activities, trade and uh, commercial exchanges. And this also a concentrated area for international travel for business. So it's likely that uh, uh, because of traveling, uh, some people could have uh, transmitted infection in this part of Italy. Uh, in Italy, because uh, of the sharp uh, increase of COVID-19 cases, uh, with a tremendous impact on uh, the healthcare system and on uh, the hospital as well, the government decided uh, the lockdown of social and work activities on March 10, uh, 2020. After a few weeks, uh, there was a decrease of new confirmed COVID-19 cases. And uh, on May 4th, there was a partial opening of all the, these activities, social and work activities, without any significant impact on the incidence of new confirmed cases. As of May 27, yesterday, uh, 231,000 COVID cases were reported in Italy with 33,000 deaths. That means mortality 14%, is high rate of mortality. However, the epidemic curve has been constantly bending from 6,557 cases in 20, one of May to 300 new cases uh, just uh, two days ago. Furthermore, currently most of the admitted COVID-19 cases appear uh, uh, not so much severe, mild cases uh, with no need for uh, mechanical ventilation, no need for uh, intensive care. What happened, what happened in my hospital? Since uh, the beginning, uh, of the epidemic in my hospital, we have admitted 670 cases of COVID-19. Our main concern was the end of the number of available bed for intensive care. With the pressure of COVID-19 cases. For this reason, we built a new intensive care facility in few days uh, with more intensive care beds. Now the spread of uh, uh, COVID-19 is decreasing in my country, but in absence of a vaccine against uh, COVID-19, we are afraid that in winter, there will be another increase of cases. We are recommended, uh, recommended people to be careful, to avoid the crowding, to wear surgical mask, to wash the hands and to avoid direct physical contact, uh, if possible, with, uh, with anyone. So uh, I thank you. We have time for a uh, few questions. Uh, I have a question from the audience for Rock. Uh, Rock, yeah. how did you calculate COVID-19 mortality. In other words, did you count only deaths in which COVID, SARS, uh, uh, COV-2 was responsible for the, the death or uh, all the patients dying with this infection? Well, actually it is not the rate of mortality, but it is the case fatality ratio that is always uh, counted uh, in the same way taking into account all the cases uh, that were confirmed by any infection in such a case, uh, uh, SARS coronavirus 2 infection, and uh, the proportion of patients that died uh, due to this uh, COVID-19 disease. Thank you very much, uh, Rock. And uh, for Liliana, uh, what, what is uh, your experience uh, of uh, COVID-19 in a, a small city that, that during the, the epidemic uh, period was, uh, I suppose, completely closed to travelers and to tourists. 
what your what was your feeling uh, i was working and it's my job so we were really happy that uh, it works the team was okay we have enough uh, personal protective equipment and uh, enough personal what was very important to deal with such epidemic uh, so du during the epidemic it was really hard to be the whole time in the hospital not to go anywhere not to see anybody we are mediterraneans of course we like to see each other and uh, uh, be intimate more so it was uh, really i have my uh, grandson and i couldn't be with him only with this virtual seeing each other so okay but it passed i think we are at the end of the epidemic in croatia I can imagine what was uh, Dubrovnik because I know Dubrovnik that was during all the all the all the year is very crowded and uh, to see Dubrovnik without uh, people uh, uh, should be very very interesting during the lockdown of all the activities Rome was unbelievable uh, Rome was without any people any traffic uh, and uh, uh, I was one of the of the fewest people uh, uh, driving a car because I had to go every day to the hospital from my apartment. Uh, and uh, normally I take uh, uh, 40 minutes to, 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 to get my hospital. And during this period, uh, it was only 10 minutes, 10 minutes. And uh, I was always stopped by the policeman asking me, what are you doing here? I'm a doctor of the hospital. Oh, go, 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 go immediately. <laughs> Unbelievable. A great experience. Oh, so thank you very much to, to, the, to Liliana and to Rock. We are finishing on time. I just want to remind the audience to contact the, the Global Bioethics Initiative uh, for upcoming events and perhaps make a, a, a tax exempt donation to them. That is a not for profit organization serving an educational cause for the general public. Thank you very much to everybody. Thank you, Eza. Thank you.